You're watching LMCC, your community TV. Hello and welcome to Talking Points. I'm Kay Erickson with the League of Women Voters of South Tonka. And today we're talking about empowering young people of all ages to recognize, prevent, and talk about abuse. Now, while we know our communities out in the western suburbs are generally safe, we also know that physical and sexual assault and abuse can happen anywhere. With me today is Peg DeBoard, president of the South Tonka League of Women Voters, and together we're going to be talking with Heidi Nauman, who is the executive director of the Superhero Kids Foundation, which works to get a program developed by the Not Me organization into schools and other organizations. Welcome, Peg. Welcome, Heidi. Thank you for being here. Let's start by talking about the statistics around abuse, which will help us, I think, understand why this training program is so important. Can you talk about that, Heidi, about the number of kids that are actually abused? Yeah, definitely. The statistics are alarming, and most people aren't aware that one in five kids all across America are going to experience an assault or abuse before they're 18 years old. So that's, that's four to five kids per classroom all across America. And 90% of those assaults or abuse will be by people that they know. And most of the time we've spent talking about stranger awareness and stranger mm -hmm. danger, yeah. but that's only 10% of the assaults. Wow. So um, we've also learned that those assaults can cause great vulnerabilities in kids. Um, one of them being that they become um, traffic victims. Uh, over 93% of trafficked victims had an assault in their elementary years and they never told anybody about it. Can you, before we go any further, can you yeah. explain a little bit about trafficking and what that looks like? Right, so, so human trafficking is when um, a boy or a girl, I mean, could be very young, the average age of human traffic victims is 12 years old, but when a person becomes vulnerable to somebody who might try to get close to them and exploit them and get them to provide sexual services to people who are willing to pay for those services. and. Uh, Minnesota is the 13th hub in the nation for human traffic victims, um, which is another reason, reason why Minnesota Rotary has made it an initiative yeah. to become a role model for the rest of the United States in combating that. Um, so we talk about prevention in the earliest forms to try to create a less vulnerable demographic of kids who know how to become less vulnerable. And the statistics around that are pretty alarming too. But that 90 for, over 90% of traffic victims had an assault in their elementary years yep. and didn't tell anyone. Didn't tell anyone. That's 90%. I mean, that is, that's a lot of kids. Right. That's young people. And is that because it was, it was with some, someone that they know and that they're you know, either told not to tell or afraid to tell? or there's so many reasons that kids don't tell, and there's so many reasons that adults don't tell. I mean, we yeah. see that in the news I mean, yeah, all the time. Yes. Um, but with kids, it's even trickier because um, they don't tell because either they like this person or other people like this person, or they're ashamed or embarrassed, or they're afraid that something might be taken away because this person is maybe giving them gifts or toys or money, clothes, depending on the age. Um, so there's, there can be payback and they don't want to give up those things or um, maybe they think that no one's going to believe a child if they tell because mm -hmm. sometimes yeah. kids may go tell one person and if that person doesn't believe them or is trying to protect somebody else, they stop telling. Mm -hmm. So part of the programs that you'll hear when we talk about is we encourage kids to tell more than one person. Mm -hmm. So in a bigger perspective, um, you know, what are the consequences for these young people, yeah. you know, relative to their growing up years and how, it, how these assaults, you know, affect them, um, you know, in all kinds of different ways. And could you just talk about that a little bit? Yeah, the consequence. Um, the consequences can just really vary and become more extreme depending on how prolonged it is the assaults are happening. Um, 
So the consequences can range from emotional disorders, depression, anxiety, um, fear of adults, what do people want from me, distrust, uh, maybe they'll start skipping school, pretending they're sick, they have academic challenges, they can't perform in school well, they start to have risky behaviors, um, promiscuity, substance abuse, um, it could lead to more explo exploitation, um, people trying to get things from them because they're less, because they're more vulnerable. Um, maybe they'll drop out of school, um, trafficking, even suicide. We see it run all the way up to, you know, mental health, killing yeah. themselves. And right. So I think one of the things that the audience should know too is that. The, these assaults happen, it doesn't matter what socioeconomic mm -hmm. status you're mm -hmm. in, you know, what race, what ethnicity, whatever, that it, you know, it, it's pervasive. It's, per it's pervasive, definitely. It's in every single school. Um, you know, there are some pockets where there could be some more risky challenges where um, parents aren't home as much because they're having to work two jobs, so you're having to leave kids with certain people for long periods of time and, um, yeah, so there, there can be other challenges, but across the board, you know, and one in five kids, those are only the reported numbers. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's only yeah. where they find evidence for those child assaults, but most kids don't tell, most adults don't tell, so those numbers we think are really low. Mm -hmm. And that's the new statistic, isn't it? Wasn't it one in seven prior to the yes. one in five numbers coming out? Yeah, and you know, some of the websites will, um, will say, different numbers, but it all kind of comes back to the same format depending on who's doing the research. That's still such a, that's a health crisis. That's something that we can do something about. And it makes it more difficult for the schools, I would think, because yeah. they're dealing with all these behaviors that mm -hmm. they need help to, right. to you know, to address it. Right. So, so Heidi, tell us a little bit about you. I guess we've talked about yeah. the statistics. Okay. So tell us a little about you and how you got into superhero kids. Okay, um, let's see. Well, first off, I'm a mom of two kids and um, I've lived in this area with our kids for the last 23 years. And when my daughter, my oldest, got to middle school, there was a lot of freedom that kids were starting to get and I wasn't comfortable with that so I went and I found um, some safety courses that, mm -hmm. I, and I was also at the time a Girl Scout leader of 21 girls. So I thought, let me find something. We'd already tried a self-defense martial arts type thing, but nobody remembered anything from that. Mm -hmm. So I found a not me training happening in a local private school for college bound girls and their moms. And I called the founder, Al Horner, and I said, I'm really interested in bringing this to a group of my Girl Scouts. And he said, come observe, participate, check it out. And when I left, I was blown away. And I said, I have to get this to every, every girl and mom that I possibly can. So I went back to our school, um, which is the Minnetonka School District. And they ran, they've been running the program for about five years now for that. At that time, I didn't realize that in the works, was the Superhero Kids program because so many adults that had been trained through the, the Not Me program were asking for something for their kids. So the founder, Al Horner, um, looked up, well, what is a kid's biggest threat? Here it was, sexual assaults, one in five kids. And he couldn't find anything available, so he set out to design something. And within five years, working with a lot of different experts, it was, um, put together and I so I got to be around when it was first in development and talking to people about it and testing mm. it with yeah so I'm just you know and anybody that sees the program says wow this is amazing this is mm -hmm. everything we want our kids to know yeah. to be safe so I'm here and I'm hoping to spread the word about how we can get this to more kids. Now, is that the work of the foundation, is to spread the word and to get it into the schools? How does that work? Yeah, the foundation is a nonprofit, 501c3, mm -hmm. and our goal is to raise funds and give resources and grant pilots to schools so they can see what this is and the power of it, and hopefully through that, um, garner community support to help even pay for the programs, because we have 
Um, there are licensed trainers that go into the schools and most of them are licensed teachers mm -hmm. and they have to go through a certification. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. they're well trained, the trainers are well trained. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And so the program really goes from pre preschool, right? Preschool, is, do you train preschool kids or do you mm -hmm. start all the way through adults? Adult, mm -hmm. yeah. So, and, how, and then how does the, the curriculum change a little bit, I'm assuming? <laughs> um, so the, the curriculum is really offered through the Not Me training. And I guess maybe just to make that clear distinction, Superhero Kids is the foundation. Mm -hmm. And we offer grants for pilots for schools to get the curriculum offered by Not Me training. And um, so it's just one of the places that we sponsor and support for prevention in schools, but it's the one that is the greatest need and that people are asking for. So the programs offered by them start with pre-K through third grade, and there's another one, fourth through sixth grade, seventh through eighth grade, and nine through 12, and then adult level. So they're all, they're all so different and they just meet people where they are in life. You can call kindergartners superhero kids, <laughs> but you can't say that to a fourth grader anymore. You're not a superhero. We learned that with a lot of testing in the schools and well, they don't want to be a superhero anymore and they don't want to practice running in place like the kindergartners do. So, <laughs> so they, we adjust and um, I can talk to you more about some of the points if you'd like. Um, before we do that, yeah. it's time for a short break. Okay. When we come back, we'll watch an act, a video that will show us um, a little bit more about the program, how it works, and the um, man who developed it, Al Horner. Yes. So we'll come back in just a moment. Check out LMCC on Facebook. Be sure to like and friend us so you can keep up with all the happenings or to watch one of your favorite videos. Welcome back to Talking Points. I'm Kay Erickson with the League of Women Voters of South Tonka. In this segment of the program, Peg DeBoard, president of the South Tonka League, and I will continue our conversation with Heidi Nauman from the Superhero Kids Foundation. But before we do that, we're going to show you a short video that shows a little bit about what the training program looks like and a little bit from the founder of the program, Al Horner. When you're a child, the world is open to you. You are innocent. You are excited about life. You are full of energy. We need this. We need this. Our goal is for every child to learn how to become a superhero kid so that they can be safer when there is no responsible adult around to protect them. We've created a 35-minute program that is fun, not scary. There's nothing in it that's scary. The kids laugh and have fun all the way through it. Superhero, pass it on. Who has Batman? Superhero Kids Training changes kids' lives by helping them recognize when they're in this groomed assault sequence. One out of seven children are abused. I was one out of those seven. I was abused by a person who we trusted and stayed at our house overnight. It changed my life. It took my innocence away. It caused me a great deal of anxiety, depression, anger. Groomed assaults are assaults done by people the child knows. Usually starts out with a, a behavior and a touch, uh, uh, words and a touch that feel good. Groomed assaults happen when that migrates in a continuum over a period of time to a boundary violating touch. It's very difficult for the child to talk about and it becomes this capsule of poison that eventually leaks. If kids don't get the help they need, these are lifelong consequences. These are kids who have difficulty with self-esteem, uh, with mental health, with substance use, um, because they don't understand what's happened to them. We boiled it down to two simple rules. If either rule is being broken, the child can recognize that. No! Stop! And when they recognize that it's happening, Stop! then we give them the proper response. It's simple. Get away and tell. Get away and tell! No! no! Stop! 
As a pediatrician in this community for the last 20 years, I highly recommend the Superhero Kids program for its empowerment and its prevention of abuse for kids. If a rule is being broken and you get away in town. I recommend this everywhere, everywhere. Any institution that deals with youth, and I deal with youth on a daily basis, I feel like this is extremely important. I'm getting choked up here just talking, so it's it's excellent. I, I can't say it was this was extraordinary here in the room. I, I I was blown away by the whole presentation. Think about what superhero kids could have done for me when I was abused to help me gain my voice, to have the power to say no, to tell someone. You can break the cycle of pain by making sure superhero kids training reaches as many kids as possible, you can help break the cycle. Well, thank you for bringing that video, Heidi. I think it really gave us an idea of how the curriculum works and how much fun it is for the kids. And it was nice to see the man who developed it. Um, Al Horner, can you talk a little bit about the video and what we saw? Yeah, so um, the man you saw in the video was Al Horner, and he is the founder of the Not Me training programs and the founder of the Superhero Kids programs. And he's a retired former Navy SEAL officer. He's uh, 73, lives in Eden Prairie. He's a local man. Um, he was asked by a friend who had a daughter going off to college back in 2004, can you teach my daughter and her friends some things before they go off? Learning from a Navy SEAL would <laughs> help keep them safe. So um, he said, sure. He taught him a few things. A couple weeks later, that girl, the daughter, was potentially assaulted, but she knew what to do, and she got away, and she wasn't raped. So um, wow. word of mouth traveled. <laughs> and, you know, over... Gosh, I can't remember even the number now. It's at over 50,000 women have been trained in the Twin Cities since then wow. through corporations and high schools, Medtronic, Cargill, General Mills. Cargill just trained 400 women within the last year, um, U.S. Bank. So a lot of the women that were attending the trainings uh, were asking Al, what do you have for my kids? And the time he's thinking, kids, what do kids face? And when he looked it up and found out one in five kids will face an assault before they're 18, he tried to find something, and there was nothing that really focused on the fact that these kids will face this and what are they going to do about it. So he set to develop something, and he's a, he's a very passionate guy about protecting people. And as you could see in the video, he, so that was his wife, Diane, was also oh. in the video <laughs> working with the kids. So they came up with a curriculum called Superhero Kids, a way to make them feel safe and strong and empowered. And it took five years in development, uh, working with healthcare experts, teachers, mm. um, psychiatrists, clergy, parents, to put this together in a way that was short, fun, and not scary. <laughs> and so you could probably see that from the video. The kids really, that was the pre-K through third grade program that you saw. So one blip of it, there's so many other age levels, but um, really is a fun class for kids. Well, and that's the beauty of it. I mean, you've got the, the program for the younger kids, but it also graduates on to older children and older teenagers in high school and adults. Yeah, absolutely. It's different at each one. Different at each grade level, right? You So the kids through third grade are called superheroes, but by the time you get to fourth grade, we realize they don't want to be called superheroes anymore, but you can say you can be your own hero. And so the language gets changed, and they really get um, an increased language of safety because you know, 90% of assaults will be by people that the child knows or yeah. sort of knows, but kids starting in fourth grade and up are getting a lot more freedom. So they need to know a little bit more stranger awareness too. So that's also brought into the program. Um, you know, that's a time when Jacob Wetterling was abducted at a night at gunpoint. And so we address those things with the kids to know what to do when you're going to face situations like that. Mm -hmm. So all the age levels really meet them where they are. Middle school, there's a huge focus on um, safety by people you know and safety from strangers. Mm -hmm also including big pieces, components on the internet and social media, 
because grooming can happen through social media as well by people they know or sort of know or strangers who really are smart at getting to kids and trying to get closer. Well, I think the language they use is interesting, helping kids identify their, their own feelings about something because they often know when something doesn't feel right. But you call it a, a yuck moment, and when they're older, yeah. it's a creep meter or something like that. Yes. Can you talk about that? Yeah. How that's important a, that is? That is really important. It's actually the one of the most important things that is taught from K through adult. The little kids, it's called the feelings rule, and it's teaching kids how to hone into that gut feeling when something is not right, when they're feeling uncomfortable. And what does that mean to kindergarten through third graders? They come up with the words. What does uncomfortable mean? It can mean weird, scared, unsure, mad, sad, embarrassed, um, creepy, paranoid, suspicious, pain. They come up with these great words, and they all are words for uncomfortable. So now that they have a word for it, where are they feeling that in their body? Because yeah. those body feelings could be a warning signal that the feelings rule is being broken and it's not okay for people to make them feel uncomfortable. It's so important for kids to be able to trust their gut. Yeah. You know, and not not hesitate when they have a feeling mm -hmm. that is makes them uncomfortable. So what what a great way to teach kids. Right. And if they're feeling <laughs> uncomfortable and they can feel it, that's a yuck moment. <laughs> the yuck moment. <laughs> yuck moment. And what are they going to do about that? What they're going to do is to get away from it and tell a trusted adult. Get away from the thing that makes them feel uncomfortable no matter what it is and talk to trusted adults. Um, and then also there's the swimsuit rule. If a swimsuit rule is being broken, that means there's no secrets about swimsuit areas, about touching, looking, showing. Mm. Um, no secrets about that. If, if they feel like it's a secret or are being told it's mm. a secret, that's breaking a rule. Mm. That's a yuck moment. <laughs> and the kids get away from yuck moments and go tell a trusted adult. And that's got to be hard, especially when they, they often know the person that is yeah. giving them this feeling. And to be able to have a tool to get away, it's an appropriate way to get away and to tell, be able to tell somebody no, it's, it's a big deal. Right. And they're learning techniques to get away. How do you get away from it? Because there's many ways they can get away, but it's the right thing to do to go tell a trusted adult. And it can be scary. It can be hard. There's a lot of reasons why kids don't want to tell. Um, it can be embarrassing. Maybe they like this person. Um, maybe they're trying to protect a person. Maybe they're being offered gifts or money or toys or treats or um, things, and they don't want to give those things up. Maybe they think no one will believe a child. Because mm -hmm. sometimes kids may go and tell a person, and they won't get believed, so they stop telling, mm -hmm. which is why we encourage kids to have a safety plan of, here's all the trusted adults you came up with. Sometimes you need to tell all your trusted adults mm -hmm. to make a yuck moment stop. So how do you involve parents yeah. in understanding about, you know, A, what their kids are learning through this program, and then how to support their children? So parents, that's a unique thing about the programs, too. So we've been talking a lot about the K through 3 mm -hmm. program, but there's also 4 through 6, 7 through 8, and then the high school and adult. Um, the unique thing is that the parents are being educated at the same time as the kids in the school. So parents have an opportunity to come to a preview and learn and discuss and ask questions. And they're also given digitally a parent guide um, that will be sent to them by their school twice. And in the parent guide are all kinds of resources, facts about abuse, grooming, um, behaviors that should concern you, um, what parents can do to protect a child. Um, and some of the things that are talked about in here, and I'll just say a few because they are really important. Um, schools used to teach and parents used to teach good touch, bad touch, mm -hmm. which is really confusing. And so um, our recommendation and experts' recommendation is to avoid saying things like that because there's a lot of shaming in it. Can a good person do a bad touch? Can a bad person do a good touch? <laughs> and do we want those 
things <laughs> being called bad because later mm -hmm. in life, they're good. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be good and we're supposed to procreate. So taking the shame away from that, but using words like safe touch or um, safe touch or secret touch to kind of talk to kids. Also um, reinforcing rules that the kids will learn in the class, the feelings rule, the swimsuit rule, but giving kids the permission to protect their own bodies. So if they don't want to kiss or hug somebody, letting them know it's okay that you're in control of your space. Mm -hmm. And if you don't want to, that's fine. Maybe come up with something else you can do, like a fist bump or give a peace sign, mm -hmm. um, pat on the back, anything else so that we're not, as adults, forcing them to do things they're not comfortable with. It um, sounds like the parent piece is really important because both the parents and the young people are using the same language to talk about an issue that's really difficult to talk about. It almost opens the door for more conversation, I would think. There's so much more conversation and you know, talking about body parts and um, just making sure that we are keeping the conversations open, that mm -hmm. they know you can ask me anything, we can talk about anything, nothing has to be a secret. Um, and helping kids come up with two trusted adults. You know, am I one of your trusted adults? Who else would you go to? Mm -hmm. Those mm -hmm. are really important things. Mm -hmm. Dropping by child's activities, unexpected. We talked a little bit about social media, but um, can you talk about the parents' role in mind? I mean, how do they deal with the social media? Right. Um, hugely important. So by the time we're getting into, you know, even fourth grade, mm -hmm. we're yeah. talking social media because those right. kids are on online games. Fortnite mm -hmm. is a big one where you can mm -hmm. play online with strangers. And that just happened actually down in Lakeville where a child was um, being approached by strangers. He, they talked him into going into his mom's purse and getting a, taking a picture of her credit card and sending to them because they were going to give him free bucks in, inside the game. He was eight years old. Um, so they're on these online games, but also it seems like sixth grade is kind of a rite of passage when kids are getting phones and they're mm -hmm. certainly online with different things. Uh, middle school, we talk about social media a lot because grooming can happen so easily. What does that look like? So, um, for instance, if a person has a social media account and it's like not Snapchat set up, like or, Snapchat or okay. um, Instagram, those are two of the most popular right now. There, there's a whole list of, a whole, oh. of really inappropriate chat rooms and things that kids go to that um, parents should be aware of, I know. Parents should be in tune checking those phones constantly. Mm -hmm. Parents should have all the passwords and be checking for their safety. And those are, that should be a rule. If we're paying for your phone, we are in charge of your safety mm -hmm. on this phone. And the phone won't be in your bedroom with you. It'll be, um, we're checking up on it to make sure that you're safe. Instagram, those sites should be private so that strangers can't get to them. Mm -hmm. It's really easy. They're so manipulative at how they can easily get to somebody and start pretending that they're interested in them mm. or grooming them. And for some girls who are very vulnerable or feeling promiscuous for whatever reasons, they're, they're um, liking the fact that somebody's interested in them. Mm. And it could be a good looking guy who wants to come and finally meet with them, which happened on the north side of the Twin Cities. Um, they'll pretend to be boyfriend and girlfriend and fall in love and then they'll get to meet, and mm -hmm. things can happen from that point. But it's mostly people they know or sort of know, and they're all being at, not all, it's common that a lot of people are being asked for pictures. It escalates into, oh, you know, you're so handsome, now take your basketball jersey off, let me see your muscles. Same thing the other way, boys and girls. It escalates into sending inappropriate pictures. And kids need to learn that's illegal. That's child pornography. If you're being, if you're sending mm -hmm. any swimsuit area <laughs> pictures, you're breaking the law if you're receiving any on your phone. So we encourage them, if you're receiving pictures like this, you need to go to a trusted adult and talk about. But that, yeah, I, I mean, I have heard that you, you know, there are some of these online um, programs that the kids are into that two or three clicks and you're into pornography. That's on Snapchat, yes. Mm -hmm. But going back to the um, sending pictures back and forth, um, you, 
the kids can be exploited that way too and coerced into other behaviors that are not particularly good for them. Right. They can be coerced, especially the closer that somebody gets to them. And so uh, one of the things that, we, that is taught in the class is when people are getting closer than normal. You know, there's a point when it's closer than normal. And then this person will try to get you alone with them. And that's where things can happen. When you hear that one in five children will be assaulted by the age of 18, so what, what are the ramifications going forward? Yeah, so one of the last reports that I just read, um, I'll put this in a dollar amount and then I'll go into the rest because I thought this was fascinating. One of the last reports I saw was in the United States, the best they could come up with was $585 billion a cost on society. In Minnesota, it's in the billions, but it's really hard to kind of figure out a number. But more importantly than that, the consequences to society, um, there's a huge cost with um, mental health issues, with health care issues. People become increasingly sick. There's rates of um, obesity and health or heart disease. The list is so long. Um, criminal justice, um, welfare, law enforcement, incarceration, people dropping out of school. Mm. And so we have a less educated society who's bringing good things to our communities. Um, and when you're less educated, you know, you're at more risk for more things. You know, you're, you have a tougher time buying food for your family sometimes and finding a place to live mm -hmm. that, um, so, and, and along with that, um, the Center for D Disease Control through the government, the CDC, and the Minnesota Department of Health is very focused on ACEs right now. ACEs stands for Adverse Childhood Experiences. Mm -hmm. And that is when kids have an adverse childhood experience, the more they have, the more risk they can have for mm -hmm. so many other things in their life. Mm -hmm. And there's a list of nine different mm. adverse experiences. Um, some of them on there are uh, physical abuse or assault, sexual assault, um, if they live in a home where there is substance abuse going on, or violence towards the mother, or divorced parents. There's just a list, and there's different levels of stress. But toxic stress, mm -hmm. yeah. toxic stress is the biggest one when you're talking about an assault like this with one in five kids. So. Yeah. Schools are focused on counting aces with kids. They get a point for each thing. And the more aces that kids have, or teens, or even adults, the more they're at risk for all those consequences that come down the road for them that can be anywhere from you know, emotional disorders. I think we talked about that. Mm -hmm. um, Which goes to how important um, the work is of the Not Me training and the foundation for getting this program into the schools to try to prevent some of these things from happening to, to children and young people in the first place. Right. Prevention costs so much less than taking care of the trauma afterwards for the victim and society. So if our audience is unsure of if um, this program is being offered in the schools, how, do they, how, how would they find out, or how would they find out you know, that they want this in their <laughs> schools? <laughs> yeah, if this is something a school is interested in, or anybody um, can go to the websites at www.superherokids.org, and the, the uh, websites will be up on the screen here too, um, or notmetraining.com, and contact someone through the contact page, and questions can get answered, information can be sent, and so it, it could be schools, it could be organizations, schools. it could be mm -hmm. League of Women Voters. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, the Superhero Kids Foundation is focused on schools because we really want all kids. So that's where we focus on giving grants and resources. Um, the Not Me training has all the trainers and the programs and the curriculum. So either one can be contacted, we work pretty closely together. So it could be Girl Scout groups, it could be League of Women Voters, <laughs> um, any private groups, churches, anyone can set up their own classes. So too. getting the word out about the program is part of it. Are, are there other things that all of us can do to, to prevent assaults and abuse? Yeah, I think number one, um, everybody should get to a class and come and learn how to be safer and escape if you ever needed to. So. 
will help the League of Women, Women Voters set up a class. Um, also, just talking to their schools, talking to, to your schools about these programs, that, that it is a thing, it is available, and if there is something we can do, we should be doing it. ACEs are preventable. The Center for Disease Control stated that this week. ACEs are preventable. And these work, we know that they're working. We're hearing stories back. Mm -hmm. um, so get us in touch with your schools. Talk to the people in your schools, the right people that will want to make this happen. And then um, really importantly, too, we need funding so that we can go out to the schools and offer grants and pilots and let them try it and see how it's working. So donating to the foundation through other foundations or individual sponsors, you can donate um, for your local community to all of, there's still, I think, 246,000 kids in the metro area. We're reaching, we're at about 12,000 mm. this year, a mm -hmm. pinch. Right. We'd love to be able to reach more. So funding is definitely a priority for us. Thank you both for being here today. Heidi, the work that you're doing to prevent these assaults is so important. It's such a pervasive issue, and the cost to society and the individuals are so huge. It's just such important work. We really appreciate your telling us about the program and what you're doing. Yeah. Well, thank you for the opportunity. Um, you know, we're trying to reach more and more kids, 246,000 kids <laughs> here in the metro area, and this year we'll be reaching 12,000. We'd, we'd love to do more. And, um, so your, your support for awareness and bringing it to your community is, is really impactful. So I appreciate the chance to get to talk about this and try to reach more people. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. That's, that sounds like the key. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Programs like this are just part of League's mission. For 100 years, the League of Women Voters has been encouraging people to get informed, to get involved, and to vote. We hold public meetings to inform people about issues important to their communities. We put on candidates' meetings and provide information for voters. We also study issues, take positions, and lobby at the local, state, and national levels. We're nonpartisan, which means we don't support political parties or candidates. Our league is open to individuals 16 years of age and older, and we serve the cities in southwest Hennepin County. We invite you to join us. You can find more about our league at lwvsouthtonka.org. Finally, I'd like to thank the Lake Minnetonka Communications Commission for the opportunity to present this program and to thank you for watching.